Hello, can you believe it? We're here. It's Climate Fridays, brought to you by School Striker for Climate Change and Green Music Australia. My name's Ketchy and I can't believe this is our final week that I get to share amazing conversations by our amazing guests and musicians. Before we start, I'm shouting out to you from Nam. And I pay my respects to the Wandru people of the Kulin Nation. On behalf of Climate Fridays, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded and this was and always will be Aboriginal land. Well, what is Climate Fridays about? We're here to energise you to stay active during this pandemic. We want to stop fossil fuel expansion and strengthen the solidarity between First Nations, school strikers for climate and the Australian music scene. I'm so excited for the guest that is performing for you in our final uh, episode for season two. If my t-shirt doesn't give it away, let me tell you who they are. Cubsport are an amazing dream pop band and gorgeous friends of mine. We're joined by Tim in his lovely uh, set up with his piano and I'm really excited to hear this first track. Hey Tim, how are you? Hello, I'm good, how are you? Good. Now uh, just before you start and because this is a show that's talking about activism, I wanted to ask you about your experience as a musician um, and as also in the band Cub Sport and um, coming into your own identity and also being such an icon for a lot of queer LGBTQIA plus people in this country. What, what made you feel like it was important to share your voice and encourage people to do the same? I think it was just realising that in speaking your truth and I guess talking about what is important to you, um, it helps empower other people to do the same and I think that that's like that's how you see change happen and that's how you see people grow to be comfortable with who they are and um, yeah I think it was just realizing that I could be myself and that I didn't have to be scared of that and that in doing that I could inspire other people too. Yeah you have a really powerful voice, not, not only as an honest spokesperson for your experience and the experience that I feel that a lot of people go through, but also because your voice is just magnificent in general. And I'm so excited for this song that you're playing for us today. Thank you so much. And right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to play a song called Be Your Man. And this is Evie here. She might... Um, she might feature a little bit. Maybe I'm a fool to think that I could have it all. Always long enough to soak. But when we give them to the core. I feel you all around me, I'm all right. I'm flowing deep in something just like that. Baby, I'm a fool to think in one day I'll have everything. Cause I'm looking around and it's like, baby, I've got everything that I change with the times. Sometimes my truth feels like a lie. What does it mean for me to be your man? I'm feeling a Baby, I can't stand this feeling anymore. How can I give you anymore? 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 
Baby, I'm so tired. I know you feel it too. I've been feeling everything. It changes with the moon, baby. I'll hold to you. No matter what, you know that I'll hold on to you. There's this darkness that I hide underneath. You're the one who sees it. You tell me it's alright, and I'm running for the prize. But sometimes I don't know what's behind my eyes. What does it mean? For me to be your man, baby, I'm feeling weak. Baby, I can't stand this feeling anymore. How can I give you anymore? What does it mean for me to be your man? Baby, I can't stand this feeling anymore. How can I give you anymore? Wow, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Tim, for sharing Thank that with you. us. Such a gorgeous song. Um, and now, <laughs> it was also nice seeing Evie there. And we're getting a lot of people um, messaging in, actually, saying hi to Evie this Friday for Climate Fridays. Oh, my God, <laughs> Cub Sport, you're amazing. Gorgeous, Tim, with puppy dog eyes. Amazing, wow. And so many more messages flying through. We're going to leave Tim here for a sec while we jump into an amazing conversation about really great initiatives that are happening this week, next week and into the future and beyond. Representing School Striker for Climate Change, I am joined by Ethan Taylor, oh, sorry, Luca Saunders and from CBOB, Luke, uh, Ethan Taylor will also be joining me. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. How about you? I'm doing, I'm so excited for tonight and about this conversation. And um, I've got a question for you. This is a question that I ask everybody. Um, what was your inspiration? What drew you towards activism and how did you get involved in activism? Yeah, so um, I live in a regional and rural area in New South Wales. So I've been affected by the climate crisis on the front line for most of my life. Um, I originally, I mean, it sounds really childish, but uh, when I was younger, I would always say, um, well, my, my computer's about to run out. When I was younger, I would, um, I would always say, like, I would love to be an actor, or I'd love to be a writer, or um, anything really in the creative industry, but I, I can't do that because I have to save the world first, which sounds slightly narcissistic, but at the time it was really, I, I passionately felt that. Um, and I, I actually, I heard about the climate strikes. Um, I heard about the March 15th climate strike um, back at the beginning of last year. And I honestly felt like this was in, an incredible opportunity for me to really be able to um, pursue something I was so passionate about. So. Um, I went to that strike and I ended up getting involved with the organising team, some other incredible activists in Sydney, um, and organised the September the September 20 strike in Sydney, um, which had an incredible turnout. It was the most surreal thing I've, I've ever experienced. And then the recent uh, Black Summer bushfires 
almost destroyed my house in the town that we live in. So that was really a wake up call for me. Um, and I honestly felt like as someone who still had my house, who had the privilege to be able to speak up with these experiences, I really had to uh, take a step forward and um, use my experience with the climate crisis to hopefully uh, draw in some people uh, who weren't swayed by fact and more by personal story. So I felt like really it was my obligation um, to use the privilege that I had to actually fight for this issue. Also, when there are so many people um, who don't have the don't have the opportunity or the facilities to be able to speak up. Um, so yeah, that's really what drew me towards climate activism personally. That is amazing. And it's so great to hear how you've had such a big impact with uh, the rallies that happened last year and also um, more recently. Um, I want to jump over to Ethan Taylor. I feel like you've been kind of in amongst like the discussion around Climate Friday because uh, you've been in uh, the Northern Territory working on the election there um, and now you're in uh, back in WA on the West Coast slash the best coast. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, um, about what's happening with SEED and what's uh, what's the next steps moving forward? Because this is our last episode for this season, but I'd love for people to be able to know where else they can find out information or what else they can do in support of your amazing work. No, my pleasure. Um, yeah, so my name is Ethan, Warramongu man. Uh, Warramongu is a nation that surrounds the creek in the Northern Territory and within that nation, um, uh, part of the Pirate Clan and uh, the Double Dairy Skin Group, uh, which is my skin name, Double Dairy. Um, yeah, right now, look, Seed is wrapping up our peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser called Speak Up. So there's currently hundreds of young people across the nation, uh, including many First Nations young people who are having conversations with uh, their community members, their family members, and their friends about climate change and about the climate crisis and you know, about the solutions that we need to all be working towards. Yeah, so that's that's essentially superpowering our movement right now. It's uh, it's been going for two weeks, and this is the last day. I think we've raised more than seventy thousand dollars in that time, uh, which is amazing. Uh, but what's more, what's a lot better than that, in my opinion, at least, uh, is the conversations we've had. We've had thousands, you know, hundreds and thousands of conversations with people all across the nation, and we've been bringing more and more people into our movement, and ultimately. Um, I think Tim touched on that actually. That's how we're going to win um, by bringing more and more people into our movement, ultimately, gro ultimately growing our movement, uh, in terms of charging our campaigns at the same time. Yeah, and moving forward, uh, you know, we've got Origins AGM coming up, and we're getting ready to mobilise around that. Slash, we are already mobilising around that to, uh, you know, force Origin Energy at the AGM to stop, uh, to commit to uh, you know, not fracking in the northern in the Northern Territory. Uh, slash just not fracking at all would be great, um, you know, not just in the NT. Um, yeah, we just finished a, a big amount of work with the NT election as well, which um, you, know, you touched on. But, um, I was up there on the ground doing some work, which is, my, some, as I said, my country's up there, so it was good to be home and good to be working, you know, with family and community that I know and I love. Of course, I love all the communities that I go to, though, but uh, it's good to be. It's always good, always good to be home, you know. And then that was really good. It was, we, um, we're connected to more communities in the NT than we ever were before. We've got more young people that, we've, uh, that are a part of Seeds Network than ever before in, in cr crucial places in the NT where we really need a lot of young people mobilising and acting to stop fracking. Um, so, yeah, it's been a, been a good bit of success um, and we're gearing up to you know, hopefully um, get a big win at Origins AGM. Yeah, I just jumped on and had a look up at speakupforclimate.com.au, um, which is where people can jump on to donate. And you've almost hit the 100K mark, which is amazing. You've got two more days for people to donate. And they really, like, we should really hit the big, like, triple, I was about to say triple digits. It's more than three digits in that. Sorry, Friday night. <laughs> to hit the big 100K on that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you haven't donated already, jump on there. So I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are, Luca. We're running the show now. <laughs> 
Yep, it's all <laughs> us. Internet is horrible. Yes, it is. I loved your story, by the way, and great passion. That's so good. Thank you so much. You as well. It's really incredible. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> Yes. Um, to the person that commented, I hope all you kids have told your parents to switch to uh, renewables. Yes, yes, I have. Um, yes, a lot, a lot. My goodness. Um, all right, all right. So she'll be back on in a second. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, let's. Um, I suppose we can. Have you got anything coming up, Luca? Uh, that people can know yeah. about. Coming in. September 25. Um, I think there's a question coming up about that. Just a just a, a really short little sneak peek. Basically, it's fund our future, not gas, uh, is our hashtag. Kind of links into what you were talking about um, with fracking in the Northern Territory. Really, we're just trying to connect everyone around this issue because um, Scott Morrison is pushing for a gas fueled COVID recovery, which is the least that we need at this point in time. Um, I will, I have a bit more of a yarn, but um, I'll leave that for later. In the meantime, how about like, how did you get involved with activism? Like, was it something that you always grew up with or was that something that kind of came around later days? Like anything? That's a great question. Um, well, I think when you're born, um, you know, Indigenous or, you know, BIPOC of any kind, you, you're kind of born into activism a little bit. Um, so, you know, I suppose just growing up, I was, uh, you know, already a heavily politicised person. Um, but, I, you know, I suppose in light of all that, chose to, uh, chose to act and chose to organise and chose to work with people, ultimately for the benefit of my community and other communities as well. Oh, you're back. Amazing. I'm back. But I'm loving this conversation, so please keep going. <laughs> oh, no, um, yeah, so just um, was born into it a bit, uh, you know, realised that I wanted to act and I wanted to help other people and I wanted to help my communities and I wanted to help other communities. Um, and I think my, you know, getting into activism moment really kind of capitalised when I went to, um, so I reached a peak, I should say, when I went to Melbourne and I witnessed my first rally and I was, it was completely accidental. Um, and we were there on invasion day and we were just walking down the street on invasion day. And all of a sudden there was this massive rally. And I, I'm, you know, grew up in the regions. And I've never seen that many people in my entire life. I grew up here in Geraldton. Um, and I just remember being so, so swept off my feet by the power of the people moving down the street, just in pure defiance of um, everything that is, you know, the racism behind. Australia Day um, and I was just moved and I thought that that's where I need to be. I need to be in Melbourne. So I need to be there where the action is. I need to be working with people and, and doing stuff. So I uh, relocated there and did my undergraduate degree there and the rest is history. Cool story. All right. Uh, we're back in business. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm loving listening. I feel like every week I kind of talk probably too much. So it's really nice hearing about your stories. Interestingly, um, you're both from smaller regional towns coming to the city to have these rallies. I was really interested to um, hear what it was like to be a school striker and in, and in that experience too. It was really just a shock. Um, I guess I, I came from a place that there aren't that many people here. Um, going into the city in my first rally, I don't remember how many people were there. I think it was like 40,000, 30 to 40,000 people, um, all in, packed into one small square. I was right in the middle of it, only one person that I knew. Um, it was just, I guess, a huge transition point for me because it was, it has to have been the most euphoric moment of my life because I finally felt like I was where I was meant to be at the time where I, where I was meant to be going. Um, and I felt this really huge urge to just get back there again. Um, obviously when I came back, I'd been working with a team of city strikers um, for months to get uh, September 20 to the ground. 
it was a huge logistical gamble um, and we were only seven or eight kids with a few adult supporters. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, coming back the second, I had to travel about three hours to get to the city for about two meetings a week in the city by myself on the train. I was only 14 at the time. Um, so it was incredibly confronting, I will admit. Um, but then going to my second strike, um, it was just, um, well, it was way different. It wasn't that same euphoric feeling. I was so tired. I was about to throw up. I hadn't had water all day. My back hurt. I was literally about to cripple on the sidewalk. Um, you had like 50,000 cameras in your face, people screaming at you the whole time. Um, so it was definitely not as good a feeling as the first time. I really just wanted to be out in the crowd, but, um, I definitely felt fulfilled. And honestly, I, I don't know where I'd be right now if I hadn't found School Strike. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah, that's about it. Um, I myself has, have only been to one strike and it was, uh, it was even more by accident. I went to uh, watch a band play in a park and it turned out that they were playing music for a strike that was happening. And so oh. I just got swept up in it. Um, I wanted to ask you both, though, when you are in these rallies, like on the ground amongst people who want to either support you or like push for this change to happen, do you get to have really, do you get to have amazing conversations when you are in these live spheres? When you're at the street? Yeah, like do you get to meet more people that kind of share your opinion or do you get to have conversations or maybe change some people's minds? Well, I feel like the people who are showing up to the strikes already believe very strongly in what you're trying to take, like, take across. And, I mean, I, at least personally, uh, the only strike I've actually managed to organise in person because of um, this global pandemic was September 20th. And I personally, the only conversations I had that day were rushed hellos with other strikers and maybe, and some interviews now and there. I had obviously conversations um, with the media, but you're in such a huge rush to get places that you really don't have any time to stop and talk with people. You're just running back and forth, back and forth. Obviously from being in the climate movement, I've been able to have some very incredible conversations with people and even start maybe hopefully to sway a few, a few people from what they previously believed in. But at strikes, it's really, it's an incredibly different atmosphere. Yeah. It, Ethan, I was wondering what your um, perspective would be, because as well as that, like Seed is an organisation that brings together young people and, and um, helps them find the platforms that get the most effective response. Did you find yourself talking to people, maybe encouraging them to, join what uh like the movements that you have been a part of yeah i think the i think in terms of conversations at rallies it's more organizing like for the future and less changing mindy kind of conversations that you might have with someone i find is similar to what um you know luca just discussed it's it's more the hey you're here that's amazing come do this next you know like let's get together let's meet up let's grab a coffee let's talk about um you know such and such and let's expand this movement in a way that it might need to be expanded or let's you know continue supporting a another movement that needs a, a bit of support so it's you know the conversations i think that ultimately grow the movement in really productive ways what has been your experience because um we are leading up to speak up for climate where there's going to be over fifty thousand conversations um between different people from their different experiences what have been some of the most uh, like, what have been some of the best things that have come out of conversations that you've had personally? Um, some of the best things that have come out of conversations I've had personally? Oh, that's a good question. There is so, there are so many. I think, honestly, the best things that come out of the conversations I get to have are people feeling empowered to go and have conversations with other people and feeling like they can have the support of, and they're a part of a family that, you know, will give them the love and the care that they need. Um, to go out there and have conversations with their other family members or, you know, their members of, uh, members of their community. And, yeah, honestly, those are the, probably the most rewarding conversations that I've had to, I've been able to have in the last couple of weeks and speak up is, you know, 
being able to connect someone or say, hey, you know, you're doing speak up. This person's also doing speak up. You should get together and, you know, chat. Um, or being able to hype people up and just give people a bit of a boost of energy, you know, throughout the last couple of weeks as they're going out there and having conversations because it's draining and it's been draining, you know. Uh, you, know it, you know, it's always draining when you have to have a conversation. About, you know, someone might just be stubborn and might just not be training their mind, but those are the conversations you have to have. And ultimately getting to support people while they go and do that and while we have those thousands of conversations. That's been my most rewarding part of speaking. Do you find that when you do have conversations with people that have a difference of opinion, that does it like strengthen what you think or strengthen your argument in your head when you, or does it make you aware of maybe the ways in which people don't understand what's going on around them? Yeah, I think like, I think there's so much to be learned from conversations you know, with people who um, have different opinions. Um, ultimately, obviously, still with the goal of changing their mind and bringing them on to the, to the climate movement and not just <laughs> using that as a cop out, you know. Yeah. Um, there are always things to learn. There are always things to learn about, you know, other ideologies that ultimately, you know, it's, it's ultimately always values and ideologies that motivate, you know, people's actions and really being able to peer behind that, that curtain when you're in a conversation with someone and be like, oh, wow, so you think that, you know, the climate crisis isn't that bad because X value, you know, or you think we shouldn't be doing acting on it because x ideology oh wow that's useful um next time i go into a conversation with someone maybe i'll begin by addressing that ideology or addressing that value and see if that's something that's shared by other people uh, and ultimately you become better at changing people's minds you know changing people's minds and having those kinds of conversations it's something that you get better at and it's through learning like you just said through um you know introspecting and thinking about wow like you know, for a split second thinking, oh, wow, does my position need to change? If, no, it probably doesn't, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> just in case. Um, so that, yeah, there's lots to learn from those kinds of conversations. I do have uh, a final question for you both because we are going into the performance. Um, oh, I think Luca's disappeared. Hopefully she comes back. Oh, um, <laughs> technology. Um, <Yeah. laughs> I, I, I've got a question for you. I'm going to ask you the question and then I'm just going to rattle off a few key important dates and websites and everything else that people can get involved in. Um, so the question is, because uh, seed mob as well as school strike for climate change um, involve young people, what would you like to say to young people who might think or who might have been told I'm too young to have a voice or I'm too young to voice my opinion? I just want to leave that with you as I go through this. Sorry if it's a bit of an existential one to finish things off, but um, I, I know your response is going to be great. And for those wanting to uh, be able to help support amazing people through CMOB or even School Fuck Strike for Climate, there's awesome resources out there of how you can get in touch with them. One of them being speakupforclimate.com. Dot au. They've got two more days to raise funds. They've nearly hit the 100K mark. They just need that little push to get them across the line. And by doing so, you're helping them have amazing and interesting conversations. In fact, over 50,000 conversations across the country about climate justice and the climate justice movement. It's an opportunity for you to learn and maybe meet some people that can tell you about their firsthand experience and learn and grow together which is awesome. These money, this money is going um, to SeedMob and also to the Australian Youth Climate Coalition. Really exciting there. There's also School Striker for Climate and you can reach SeedMob individually at seedmob.org.au. I'm gonna jump back to Ethan with my question, with my, to find out the answer for what he has, I, I can't speak anymore, for young people out there who are interested in getting involved in activism and maybe just a little bit nervous and need that extra push. Mm. Well, I'd say if anyone tells you that you're too young to have an opinion on something like the climate crisis or on politics in general, just ignore them um, and keep doing <laughs> keep doing what you're doing and keep having opinions because it's probably that they don't like your opinions and less about you being young, to be honest. Um, so just keep doing what you're doing. Stick to your guns. Like, hold your values close, hold what you what you know about the world close and hold your truths close to you. Um, and, I, and remember that you're not alone, you know, remember that there's, uh, you know, you're not alone, you're not the first young person to go through experiencing that, you're not the last, unfortunately. Um, and there's many other people, many other people, um, young people just like you going through that. Uh, and there's lots of support available and always reach out and always um, surround yourself with like-minded young people as well. 
Awesome. Luca, I hope you heard uh, that question, but if you didn't, what advice would you give to young people who might be scared or have been told that they're too young to have an opinion um, or that they're too young to know right from wrong? Um, well, first of all, uh, I did say my computer was going to run out right at the beginning <laughs> and uh, totally did. <laughs> I forgot about it. So um, it's been a recovery, but um, what would I say to young people who um, feel like they can't speak up because they are young? Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a second. Um, I would honestly just say, I mean, this is our future that we're fighting for. We're the ones who are going to be impacted by the climate crisis. Um, and honestly, yeah, you're never really too young to voice an opinion. I feel like we learn things from our families. We grow with opinions. Like when we're younger, we start to formulate our own, we, we start to formulate opinions based on what other people um, that we're around think. But on, honestly, when we grow up, we start to, to formulate our own opinions. And that's really just a natural thing. And it's just really important that if you believe in something strongly, things keep popping up. If you believe in something strongly, um, and you understand that it's that it's going to be something that's going to affect you or that does affect other people, then it's just incredibly important for you to stand up because um, otherwise, I mean, I know personally I wouldn't be able to look myself in the eyes um, if I knew that I wasn't. Oh, oh, oops, my mic is going weird. Um, if I if I wasn't um, doing something about the climate crisis uh, because mm. it does it does affect other people. So even if it's not going to affect you. Um, it is really important that you stand up no matter what other people think because this is this is your future this isn't anyone else's so um, great yeah. beautiful words um, I'd like to thank um, Ethan from Seed Mob and all the guests that we've had from Seed who have brought amazing stories amazing first-hand experiences and amazing knowledge for us to learn thank you so much for joining me in this conversation on our last ever not ever but last one for the season um i'd also like to thank uh luke saunders from lucas saunders from school strike for climate um amazing speaker amazing person so great to hear your stories as well lots of love coming for you from uh the messages on the live stream and to finish things up um we're going to end on a beautiful note uh again coming from tim from Cub sport bringing us another uh, another song to finish things up for the night. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be able to jump on. Yes. Hello. I don't know Hello. That's okay. It's it's okay. Everything's fine. We're having a great time. Um, Tim, thank you so much um, for joining us and being a part of Climate Fridays. This is such a great initiative um, to energize people to stay active during this time. Um, and also thank you to all the musicians that we've had during this time. Um, it'd be so beyond awesome if you could take us out with a great track before our Friday night is up. That will be my pleasure. And can I just say, Ethan, Luca and Kedji, you are all so amazing and that was incredible to be a part of. So thank you very much. I'm going to um, play one of my favourite Cub Sports songs now. This is Come On Mess Me Up. Walking the Spark Street, growing up real fast. Left it behind pretty quickly. Still the farthest thing from pretty. From comfort. I found the waiting ground. We were riding on Smith Street, we were right on track. Left it behind without sinking, 
They all said I wasn't thinking of from Colbert. I fell in love with waiting problems. But I want this, and I want this. So come on, mess me up. But you can break me if you still take me. Ruin me if you let me be one of the ones you say you won't forget. Cause I want this, and I want this. So come on, mess me up. I was stumbling on something, throwing up real hard. Inside was kind of misty. I knew none of the history of Found Colbert I fell in love with avoiding problems And that was the problem Cause I want this And I want this So come on Ruin me if you let me be one of the ones you say you won't forget. Cause I want this, and I want this. So come on, mess me up. Cause I want this, and I want this. So come on, mess me up. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. <laughs> um, I can't believe it. We're at the final Climate Fridays. I'd like to thank Cub Sport and all the musicians who have joined us and made our Fridays that extra bit special. I'd also like to um, do a shout out to Seed Mob, School Striker for Climate, Fire Sticks and Green Music Australia for putting on this event and keeping us entertained during a pandemic. It's really important that we make sure that this world is kept taken care of and that we take care of this land, not only for the sake of First Nations people, but for the sake of everyone. Um, this is an initiative to stop fossil fuel expansion and strengthen solidarity between First Nations, School Striker for Climate and the Oz music scene. My name is Ketchy and it has been my pleasure sitting here and learning every week, listening to great music and, you know, making sure you have a good one. Until next time, we're out. Bye.